The ASUS RTX 3080 Tough Gaming. We're gonna find out today just how tough it is because uh, this one suffered some damage in shipping. So what I have right here is the ASUS uh, 3080 Tough. And this video is gonna kind of serve two purposes here. One, we're gonna see if it works. I haven't even tested it yet. Um, it's not our card, don't ask me for it. Don't say, can I have it please? No, you may not have it. Nor would I give it to you. <laughs> in that condition, even for free. Um, we're gonna see uh, whether or not it works. If it does, we're gonna see if we can't fix it and make it straight again. In fact, it's so bent, even the PCI, PCIe slot is bent. It's like, I've, I don't even know how, like how that happened. Actually, I do know how it happened. This card was shipped in a system without any sort of support. The only thing holding it was the two screws in the bracket and the PCIe slot itself. We're, we're fortunate and lucky that it didn't rip the PCIe slot right off the motherboard, which is something we've seen in the past. Um, so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna kind of tell you some of the do's and don'ts of shipping a system and a graphics card, and then we're gonna see whether or not this works. So let's go ahead and start with how this could have been prevented. There's a thing called Instapack. Uh, it's actually kind of fun. I played around with it in the past. I even did a video where I shipped a tempered glass system with a graphics card installed to my driving instructor that uh, I've known for years now who lives in Wisconsin now, but at the time, Illinois. Uh, I built him a system and I shipped it to him and I was like, well, let's see if it survives. And so we took you along for the ride on how to pack it. So I'm gonna link that video right here so that you guys can go and watch it. Um, but we'll kind of show you some overlays right now of what the Instapack looks like. It just looks like a piece of plastic, almost like a trash bag. Oh, it's getting warm. It's getting, oh, there it goes. You will hear another pop. Wah! Pack immediately. It's getting hot. Whoa, that's hot. Ah! No, it's backwards. <laughs> so when it's in your system, you put it against the graphics card and then you put the side panel on and then it fills the void around it. And it literally creates a cradle for the graphics card. Um, spoiler alert, that system made it all the way via ground shipping. And we all know the kind of treatment those couriers like to give. It made it all the way to the Midwest without any damage whatsoever. So this is my overclocking rig that I do with the LN2 stuff. It's still taped to the table. So I was like, why well, as well use it. So we, let's see if it even fits in the slot. Oh, it's crunchy. It kind of straightened it out, but not the rest of the PCB. So look how misaligned it is now from the, so that's how bent the board is. Our biggest concern with the bending of a board is whether or not it cracked or broke any of the internal traces. Because remember, it's a multi-layered PCB. So whether or not it broke anything which, which is really small or potentially popped something off a of solder, we don't know. I think most people would agree that graphics cards are not supposed to be curved. I mean, it sensed something, that's a good sign. That's a video post. That's a video beep. So maybe it is dead. Wow, that's gonna be a sh world shortest video from Jay. The fans are going 100% and not slowing down. So normally they'll ramp up during initialization and then when VBIOS loads, it goes and it comes down. So this card might actually be dead. That's not a slot problem. I mean, these are all 16X slots. So I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and try another one, fine. F in chat. Bow my head for a moment of silence. Okay. <laughs> Well, let's open it up and see what we can see damage-wise. Cause remember what I was saying about potentially cracked uh, PCB, cracked traces, pieces broken off. Cause I mean, everything is designed to stay flat. <laughs> so suddenly if you create an arc, you create a tension point. So something could have broken apart, a solder could have popped off right where it is, who knows. So in order to take this apart, we are gonna use my trusty iFixit kit. We interrupt this video to bring you a special message from iFixit. No, we interrupt this interruption with this interruption. That new stuff from iFixit. This holiday season. We should a new graphics card, but inventory sucks. Fix the inventory problems with iFixit. Whoa, don't drop it. 
Can't fix that with iFixit. Just kidding, yes you can. Wish you could take iFixit with you anywhere but your pockets aren't big enough. Introducing the new Moray. And the new Minnow. Take them with you anywhere. So get iFixit for your loved ones this holiday season. Or just get them for yourself. Okay, so I think this is one where the card comes off, or the, the cooler comes off first, then the backplate comes off last. Traditionally, the backplate comes off, then the cooler. This one's backwards, where I'm pretty sure the backplate's held on from the front side. And you know, the only thing that probably kept this card from completely shearing was probably the backplate. But you know what? I just got an idea. I should probably put in another graphics card in here just to confirm this system is booting. Literally, the only thing the MSI 1050 is good for around here is troubleshooting. Yeah, so, okay. And this this could have been avoided with $9 worth of Instapack. There's gonna be a lot of noises from our neighbors, I'm sorry, everyone's loud. It's like they're banging something against the wall. Yep, just gotta use muscle sometimes, just double check that all the screws are out. Now what happened obviously with the cooler weight hanging on there is as it was throwing around and shipping and stuff, it was like constantly pulling. But because it was attached at the PCIe slot and at the front bracket, which basically meant it was going, yeah, yeah, like the weight in the opposite corner was pulling down. That's how it got bent. I mean, who knows how far this actually bent? This is where it rested. And you know, for something to bend to a certain degree, it usually has to bend past that point and then it relaxes back to us, whatever its new bent spot is gonna be. So it could have ended up like, oh. Oh, when I go the other way, listen. Jeez. You're trying to bend it back? <laughs> yes, I am, because look, it's kind of working. Because the idea is if it broke apart that way, I could push it back that way, and then I can hot glue it because Lewis Rossman approves. We do need some cooling on that though, and I don't want to put the whole thing back together. <laughs> I mean, if we get video, then we just turn it off. Dave hey, Kingpin, jealous? <laughs> J cooling. Chidunsky. It feels wrong, even though it's broken to do that with it. Yeah. People it think up. we don't appreciate or like this, like, oh, he just gets it for free, he doesn't care. That's, that couldn't be further from the truth. Yeah, we're still sad that it's dead. <laughs> it also has a, well, had a value. <laughs> like I said, the extreme overclockers, they would totally take parts off of this if they blow up VRMs and stuff, they could grab chokes and caps. That, that, it's, a, it's literally a graveyard card that would be salvaged, not to be used again, but to make something else work again. It's just sad. Hey Lewis, is this how you reflow, bro? Could you imagine if it works now? <laughs> oh my god! Oh, it almost did it! Wait, you we were onto something here. I'm only doing this because I can't make it worse unless I kill the motherboard too. We're back to 98. And it's on D6 now. Okay. I'm not done yet. You guys always say we break stuff that's perfectly good. Well, what about when it's perfectly bad? Are you still gonna get mad? I will say this, the nice thing about Asus, they label everything on the PCB. Look at the back. You can see exactly what goes to the GPU, what goes to memory, what goes to various traces and controllers. It's all labeled on the PCB. I'm just hoping it's physical on the, on the surface of the board, not internal. Then heating this might cause a reflow to help. Unless it flows into something it's not supposed to. Smell it though, you can smell the solder. Something's happening. Yeah, I don't need to smell the smell solder. Smell it, smell the solder. It's smell the toxin! This is no liquid here, it's just gas. We have an actual fridge, you know that, right? This is faster. Nope, same thing. All right. She done skis. Thanks for watching guys. Sorry we couldn't bring it back to life. All this could have been avoided with about $9 worth of packing foam.